finals. Turner was the number three seed that came out of the Northwest Three District in Division Three. Turner Lady Rams defeated Swatton in the sectional finals. Then on from Turner High School, they moved to Springfield High School. Over in Holland, they took on the number one seed Oak Harbor Rockets. They defeated Oak Harbor. And then on Saturday, defeated the number two seeded Eastwood Eagles to get here today. Huron comes from the Northwest 2 district at Shelby, where they were the number one seed. They defeated Bucyrus in the sectionals. Then the number four seed, Upper Sandusky, 4-1 to one in the semis, and then defeated Margareta in the district finals by a score of 7-1. to one. Thrower comes in representing the GMC, the Green Medals Conference, while the Tigers of Huron come in from the SBC, the Sandusky Bay Conference. They were co-champions with Lake and River. which actually is a familiar conference to Lady Rams where Oak Harbor was from, I do believe. Welcome to the Science Excavating pregame show. Science Excavating's first pitch is set for 5 p.m. Science Excavating can assist with your general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to dish clean to site prep, Science Excavating is here to assist. The Science Excavating team is committed to doing the job right, on schedule, and within budget. Based in rural defiance, Science Excavating serves all of Northwest Ohio, providing reliable and affordable excavating services for your home, business, or industrial property. The Science Excavating team offers many excavating services, including stone hauling, trenching, demolition, land clearing, and drainage work. Science Excavating is the official pregame sponsor of the Tenor Rams Live Spring Sports Season. For all your excavating needs, get a hold of Josh, 419-769-222. And for your heavy haul trucking needs, you can call Brad, 419-481-3738. Visit them on Facebook or signsexcavating.com. He said again that Huron was co-champions of the uh, Bay Conference. They have Lake, Bay, and River. They were co-champions of the Bay, which I think I stumbled through that earlier. I can't sometimes read my own writing and my papers have blown away most of them here in the last couple hours since we got here. But Huron, Margaret, and Oak Harbor, all three tied at the top of the conference, 8-2. and two. GMC-wise, Fairview finished 7-0. and Apaches played before us. They lost to Johnstown 4-0. Macy Walters got the win. She pitched seven innings, allowed just one hit, struck out 14, and did not allow a walk. And Walters at the plate was two for three. She had a three-run home run in the top of the fifth. And later that inning, Johnstown scored a run on a pass ball. But Macy Walters was the player of the year in the conference, and it showed in our first game with the Apaches seeing their season end by a score of 4 nothing to Johnstown. The winner will play Saturday here at 12 o'clock. So the Rams come in with an overall record of 9-7. and seven. They finished second in the GMC with that 6-1 and one record, one game behind Fairview. A season ago, Lady Rams took home the district title, and they beat out Seago. They were beaten in the Sweet 16 by the Cardington Lincoln Pirates. Rams graduated just one from last season. That was Quinn Horn. Also, senior Devonna Holmes has missed the entire season due to an off-season injury. Huron comes in at 23-3. and three. Tigers finished in a three-way tie to Oak, with Oak Harbor and Margaret, as we said, 8-2 in the SBC. And the circle for the Lady Rams will be Skyly Zolman. Zolman was last year's GMC Player of the Year and the Crescent News Player of the Year. This year, Skyly is 16-5. and five. Her ERA is 1.14. Skyly's pitched 147 in the third inning. She struck out 224 batters, allowed 78 hits, and she walked 65. At the plate, senior Anna Frazier leads away with a 5-12 average. Anna has 30 steals. Right behind her, Logan McQuillan hitting 5'11". Logan has three home runs and 35 RBI. Freshman Paige Gamby's been on fire here the last week. Paige comes in with a 479 average, seven home runs and 29 RBI. So Rostai, 309, four homers and 15 RBI. Paige Carpenter, 388, 27 runs batted in with two home runs. Here, here on Tigers, they have a team batting average of 435. You have 16 home runs with 222 runs scored. Liza Maloney, who's headed to the University of Toledo, she's hitting 623. She has seven home runs and 36 runs batted in. Tigers have six of nine batters with at least 20 or more runs batted in. In the circle, Maloney also leads the way. Her record is 15 and four. The area of one. 
0.05. She's got 173 strikeouts in 106 innings. Your Honor is coached by head coach Jude Schmidt, assisted by Ellison Liz and Scott Wainwright. Superintendent is Dr. James Tatman. High school principal is Tim Lamb. Athletic director is Steve Camella. The Air Division Three, 154 boys, 162 girls. Scorekeeper is Tommy Williams. They are from the Sandusky Bay Conference. Huron's colors is red and gray. Lady Rams are coached by head coach Tony Fairchild. Second season, 38 and 11. He was the 2022 Coach of the Year. Assisted by. Brian Schaffner, Brooklyn Barshowitz, Vince Linus, and Ellie Ferlin. Superintendent at Northeastern Local Schools is Nicole Wells. Your principal is Alex Nafziger. Athletic director is Craig Rudder. Trainer is Emily Volmar. Lady Rams, colors are hunter green and white. They are from the GMC. So wherever you are, however you may be listening or watching, thanks for tuning in to this afternoon's Division Three Regional Tim Semifinals. Coming up here from Jack Hewitt Field in Bucyrus, it's the Lady Rams taking on the Huron Tigers, and we'll turn things over to the PA announcer. Number three, Kaylee Lucas. Number 15, Christina Meyer. And number five, Mallory Zakrich. And now for your starting lineup. Batting number one, playing center field, Anna Fraser. Batting number two, in right field, Marin Pittman. Batting third, playing second base, Logan McQuillan. Batting fourth and playing center field, Paige Gamby. Batting fifth and playing first base, Paige Carpenter. <coughs> Batting sixth and in left field, Zoe Rostai. Pitching and batting seventh, Galia Zolman. Batting eight, playing shortstop, Tegan Norton. Our designated player, Mickey Starkey. And playing third base, Tanae Smith. Now the lineup for the home team, Huron Tigers. Hey buddy. Hey buddy. Starting with our subs, number 11, Kaylee no, no, no. Albright. Yeah. Sky Lee. Sky Lee, that's what I thought. 20, excuse me, number 27, Carissa Nethers. Oh, yes. And number 15, Layla Weddle. Your starting lineup. Number one batter and pitcher, Eliza Maloney. Batting second, playing shortstop, Jesse Holsapple. Batting third in left field, Annabelle Herzog. Playing first base and batting fourth, Laney Orzik. Batting fifth, and playing third base, Emma Shaw. Batting six and playing center field, Lauren Wainwright. Batting seventh and in right field, Sam LaFay. Batting eighth, Kendall Williams. Batting ninth in center field, J.C. Smith. And our second baseman is Alyssa Wild. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise, remove your caps, and join us as we honor America and those who serve to protect it with the playing of the national anthem.
National Anthem. Continue where we're at. Broadcast studio tonight brought to you by Cut and Polished Hair Nail Salon, located at 413 Hopkins Street. In game scoreboard brought to you by Drop Zone Pizzeria and Striker and Ayersville. Free game brought to you by Signs Excavating. Your video sponsor is always Batten Stevens in Jewel, Ohio. Stats brought to you by BSN Sports and Mr. Jim Gares. Post game, good lack insurance and investments. Player of the game in a Rams victory is Higby Embroidery. Uniforms, Rams going with the home whites with the green pants tonight with the 100 green numbers and black trim. Huron in the all grays with the red numbers and white trim. David Frank weather has cooled down considerably since the earlier game versus Fairview. Still windy. It's 70 degrees. Game time temperature at Fairview. Two o'clock was 78. And they said it's going to cool down. And it sure has. Defensively, we'll run down everything for Huron, and the first three hitters will be as Kaylee's about ready to join us. I got things kind of a tangled mess here. But if I touch something wrong, cable's going to go flying for the audio and video. All right, let me try and get things set here. Apologize for the break. Yes, not at all. <laughs> Try and get things situated there. I didn't make it easy. <laughs> <laughs> Better late than never, Kaylee. Right. <laughs> uh, for the uh, Rams, first three hitters, as always, Frazier, Pittman, and McQuillan. And looking at defensively, Liza Maloney will be on the mound. 106 innings pitched and two-thirds of an innings. She's allowed 70 hits, 36 runs, 16 earned runs. He's hit 12 batters. Record is 15-4, and four, ERA of 1.05. 42 walks, and she struck out 173. Lauren Rainwright is behind the plate. Laney Orzak is at first. Alyssa Wilds at second. Jessica Halsopel is at short. Emma Shaw is at third. Outfield, Annabella Herzog in left. Jackie Schmidt in center. And Sam LaFay in right. It is, we're about 10 minutes early. First pitch coming up. Anna Frazier steps in. Frazier. Batting leadoff for the Rams. First pitch coming to Anna, 5'11 on the season. Slapped to foul. First base side, strike one. Just in time, Kaylee, for the temperature drop 10 degrees since the Fairview. First, first <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I got out of the car and I was like, oh, it's a little chilly. <laughs> of course, I don't have a jacket and it's windier than all get out out here. Wind <laughs> blowing from right to left field here, about 15 to 20 miles an hour. Frazier takes the pitch, strike two to Anna. Maloney was the player of the year in the Sandusky Bay Conference. O2 pitch to Frazier. She slaps it by the pitcher. Frazier with a leadoff single. Once she got it by Maloney, there was no chance to throw on Anna. And she will steal down to second with them not paying attention. Yes, Anna's got 30 steals on the season. Now batting right fielder. Aaron Pittman. Aaron Pittman. I had Ram stats, but they kind of blew away with all my other stuff throughout the <laughs> three hours I was here. So, unfortunately, we're going to go stat-free for the Lady Rams. They're somewhere in the parking lot, I would assume. <laughs> And Anna did go down to second base already with... Oh, jeez, that was... <laughs> first pitch to Marin is fouled back as Kaylee jumps out of her seat. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Shane from the Crescent News during the first game jumped about seven times where he's right where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> This fence here, I'm, I don't feel so safe behind, and it's We're not very tall on the sides. We're about <laughs> 10 feet behind the action. <laughs> Pittman squares around the butt, punts it right back to the mound. Maloney fires over to Orzak to complete the sacrifice. Down to first base goes Anna Frazier. 1-3 on the put out. That's the first out here. That's going to bring up Logan McQuillan. Logan McQuillan. That was a good bunt there by Marin, though. I mean, she did exactly what she was supposed to do. She was get that get Anna moved to Perfect. third. 
Logan, I believe, 36 runs batted in on the season, if I can remember right. First pitch, little tapper, third base side. Frazier's going to try and score. Throw to first is in time. Yeah, dives in. Head first with the first run. I got a little nervous there. She dove in. She dove written right in on that bat. It looked like it hurt a little bit. Little dribbler, third base side. Shaw picked it up, looked at Frazier. As soon as Shaw threw, Frazier took off with the head first dive. Throw in from Orzak was not in time, as Kaylee said. She dove right on top of that bat. Paige Gamby steps in. Nobody hotter in the area than Paige right now. I hope we can keep seeing that action we've been seeing from her the past, well, really all season. <laughs> that one, she's a little bit late on, fouls it over the first base dugout. Strike one. Rams lead one nothing. Off the Frazier single, went to second. I think Huron kind of fell asleep. Went to third on the sacrifice by Pittman and scored on the Logan McQuillan fielder's choice. Pitches a little bit high to Page, one ball and one strike. Full house of fans again here like we had in the first game. Great to see both communities travel. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Gamby. Fouled off again, first base side. A little behind is Page on the Eliza Maloney fastball. Game one went to Johnstown, 4-0 over Fairview. One hitter by Macy Walter. She was in complete control the entire time. 14 strikeouts. She allowed just one hit to the Apaches. 1-2 pitch coming to Gamby. Little tapper, foul, third base side. High ball for there. Yes. So the Rams coming at 19 and 8. And here on 23 and 5. Or 19 and 7, actually, it's more is. 1 2 pitch coming from Maloney to Gamby. Low ball, two. Count even two balls and two strikes. Second straight trip to the Sweet 16 for the Lady Rams. Kaylee, very impressive. 2-2 pitch coming to Gamby. Maloney's pitch. Tap foul, third base side. Coach Fairchild scoops it up. He gives it to Shaw at third. Gamby staying alive. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Nobody on base. Rams with a nearly 1-0 lead as they bat here in the top of the first inning. We're about seven minutes early. 4.53 was the first pitch. Gamby again fouls it off first base side. As we said, a little bit chillier on your David Frank weather for game two. 71. At least a 7 to 8 degree drop since the first game at 2. Gamby's just a little bit behind on those pitches. But, she is. I mean, if she gets right on that, I got a feeling. I mean, just how she's hitting them a file. I think they're going to go go pretty far. 2-2 two, two pitch coming to Gamby. Inside. Backs her off the plate. Three balls and two strikes. Count is full. I feel like compared to like a lot of the fields that we played on this year, I feel like this one's kind of small to me. Like seems yeah. short. I think 202 is the farthest point. Yes. Yeah. 185 down the left field line. 2-2 two, two pitch, strike three call. Gamby knew it. Page is caught looking for the third out, but the Rams do get a run. They do so on one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. After a half inning of play here at Jack Hewitt Field at Huron, it is the Tenora Lady Rams 1 and the Huron Tigers coming to bat. We'll be back right after this time out here on Tenora Rams Live. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-8940. Bottom of the first we go. Keith Brown, Kaylee Runk with you. Thank you, Rams. The one nothing lead. Anna Frazier. Single. Went to second. Went to third on sacrifice and scored on a Logan McQuillan ground out. Skyly Zolman's on the mound. Skyly 16-5 ERA of 1.14. 
147 in the third innings pitch. 78 hits, 51 runs, 24 earned runs. She walked 65, and Scully has struck out 224 batters in 147 innings. Defensively for the Rams, Paige Gamby behind the plate, Paige Carpenter at first, Logan McCullen at second, Tegan Norton at short, Tanae Smith at third. Outfield, Rostai in left, Frazier in center, and Mary Pittman in right. First batter is Eliza Maloney. Maloney was the player of the year. She comes in with a 623 average. Seven home runs, 36 runs batted in, and 17 steals. First pitch is a ball to the leadoff hitter, Eliza Maloney. Solman's pitch to Maloney, just a bit high. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. That might have been one of those ones that might have been a little hard to judge if you're up there at bat. 2-0 pitch, fouled off on the first base side. Two balls and a strike. First three batters, Maloney, Halsopel, and Herzog to face Skyly Zolman. Zolman's 2-1 pitch to Maloney. Ground ball, second base side. Dive by McQuillan, scoops it to Paige Carpenter. What a play by McQuillan to retire Maloney. She kind of got underneath her. Like she's almost sitting on the ball, but she was able to pull that out in time to get that, to fling it to, over to Paige there to get that out. 4-3 put out again. <laughs> as we've talked about, there's nobody going to give you more effort out there than than Logan McQuillan. We see her dive during yeah, pregame warm-ups. It's never usually <laughs> graceful either. <laughs> Jessica Halsopel steps in, first pitch, heads to the backstop. She comes in hitting 463 with a homer and 25 runs batted in. Halsopel with 14 stolen bases. Zolman's 1 0 pitch. Fouled off first base side. Count even. That's at, a, this fence. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't go very high, very <laughs> no, it far. Doesn't. One ball, one strike, one out. Nobody on here. Bottom of the first. Rams with a 1 0 lead. Zolman's 1-1. One, one. Ground ball, second base side. McQuillan bobbles it, scoops it. Out! Oh, just in time. Ground ball to Logan. She knocked it down. Underhanded it to Carpenter. I didn't think she was going to get it there I in time. Did not either. <laughs> now batty. Annabella Herzog steps in. Herzog, 447. Two homers and 26 RBI. She plays in left field. First pitch is a ball. We said as a team, Huron comes in batting 425. Which is almost unheard of. Pitch is high. Two balls and no strike to the number three hitter, Annabella Herzog. Two zero pitch, just misses that outside corner. Count goes to three balls and no strikes to Annabella Herzog. Two outs, nobody on here in the bottom of the first inning with the Rams leading one nothing. Solman's three zero strike right down the middle. Gorgeous pitch by Skyler there. Norzak on deck, swung on and missed. Count is now full three and two. Kylie bringing the heat, Kaylee. That's definitely what she's known for. <laughs> Payoff pitch coming. 3-2 pitch to Herzog. Strike three called. Zolman fell behind. Three balls and no strikes. Came back to get the strikeout. Gets Herzog looking. No runs, no hits, no ram errors. Nobody left. We're through an inning of play here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard from Jack Hewitt Field here in Bucyrus. The Toronto Rams won. And the Huron Tigers, nothing. We'll be back right after this time. Out. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them a call 419-784-9880 or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com or visit their Facebook page. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun, your locally owned pawn specialists. Say go Rams. Oh, that 
kind of right in the shin. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> you want to get injured during warm ups between innings? That's going to leave. That's going to. That's going to leave a mark <laughs> for the Rams. Carpenter, Ross, Diane, Zolman to face Eliza Maloney. The Rams manufactured a run in the first inning. Bunt single by Frazier went to second. Sacrificed to third. And came home with a fielder's choice. First pitch to Page is a strike. Carpenter 388, 27 runs batted in. That pitch is high. One ball and one strike to the Rams' first baseman, Paige Carpenter. Paige, one of five seniors on this Lady Rams team. Maloney's 1-1 one, one pitch to Carpenter. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Paige down one ball and two strikes. Zoe Ross die awaits on deck. Pitch coming to Page. Check swing. Strike three. Carpenter down on the check swing for the first out. She definitely thought about that pitch, and that's one. This is going to be one of those games where they got to swing yeah, the bat. You don't have time to think against a pitcher like Eliza Maloney. Zoe Rostai steps in. Zoe, in the number six spot, plays in left field for the Lady Rams. Zoe, 309, four homers and 15 runs batted in. First pitch is a ball as the dust kicks up. One oh pitch coming to Zoe. High and away, two, ball, two balls and no strikes. One thing, Kaylee, I'll leave here with the burnt face after today. <laughs> Sitting in the sun all day. <laughs> Get a little bit of a tan. Yeah. 2-0 pitch is high, ball three. Three balls and no strikes to the Rams. Number six hitter, Zoe Rostai, Skyly Zolman. Awaits on deck. I thought me deciding to wear a black shirt today was going to be a bad decision. And then I got out of the car and I was like, it was kind of chilly. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, maybe I'm, I should be good. <laughs> with the wind and the uh, I dropping. thought it was going to be a little too hot. Yes. <laughs> 3-0 pitch coming to Rostai. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Coach B coaching at first for the Lady Rams. Coach Fairchild coaching at third. Head on, cut it. Oh, it's north. Okay. Didn't hear the wind kicking up in her mics. And this is stiff breeze here. 3-1 pitch to Zoe. Strike two call right down the middle. Maloney has come back from a 3-0 count to its... Three balls and two strikes, full count. Pitch coming to Zoe Rostai. Tap her right back to Maloney at the mound. She throws it over to first base to Orzak. It's out number two, one, three on the putout. Bring up the Rams number seven hitter, Skyly Zolman. And what a week Skyly had last week, Kaylee. Yeah, she can definitely keep that up for us. <laughs> Rallied the Rams from a 5 nothing deficit versus Oak Harbor. I think that was in the fifth, fourth or fifth inning. And the fifth inning, she hit a home run at that fifth inning and then come down to the, what I'm say, the seventh or eighth inning, yeah. hit that second home run. First pitch swung on and missed by Skyly. Tegan Norton on deck for Tenora. One or the 0 1 pitch coming to Skyly from Maloney. Way ahead of that one. Follows it back, and hopefully, whoever that is has insurance over that way. Because I totally said coming up here, I'm going to park <laughs> where my car is not going to get hit. And <laughs> I'm questioning that right now. <laughs> That would be my luck. She would hit me. <laughs> the windshield. No balls and two strikes. Here comes a pitch from Maloney to Zolman. Check swing. Strike three calls. Skyly goes down looking for the third out. For the Rams, no runs, no hits, no errors by Huron. And the Rams do not leave anybody on base. We're through an inning and a half here at Jack Hewitt Field in B. Cyrus. Regional semifinals winner. Chances a Saturday at 12 o'clock. Snora won. And here on nothing on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard.
The law office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back here. Bottom of the second inning, Rams with a one nothing lead for here on 4, 5, and 6. First hitter is Laney Orzak to a second team all-conference. First pitch to her is a strike. Next pitch, checks wing. A little bit low, gets away from Gamby. No runners on. Here on 23-5 and five this season. Pitches over the head of Orzak. It's <laughs> a good snatch by Gamby there, though. I will say that. Two one pitch to Orzak. Swung on the best. Counting with two balls and two strikes. Lady Rams with a one nothing lead as you're on bats here in the bottom of inning number two. Now it's Shaw on deck for the Tigers. Pitch drill just foul. Outside the line, down there in left field. Third base umpire immediately signaled foul. Orzak way behind that pitch from Skyly. Two-two pitch coming to Orzak. This time she laces it Ooh, even I heard farther that one hit a car. <laughs> over the third base dugout into a side of a car. So they'll have a dent when they come out. 2 2 pitch again from Zolman to Orzak. Swung on and missed. Orzak goes down swinging for the first out. For Skyly, that's strikeout number two. Emma Shaw, the number five hitter, steps in. Shaw, 437, two homers and 31 runs batted in. Shaw also has seven stolen bases. Zolman's pitch, strike, call, nice little <laughs> off-speed pitch there by Skyly. Nice pitch there. Lauren Wainwright awaits on deck. Zolman's pitch, a little blooper, first base side, Carpenter. Didn't have enough time to get to it, just a little blooper. <laughs> Landed foul in between home plate and first base, about halfway down the line in foul territory. Pitch to Skyler. By Skyler, he bit outside. Count even to the ball and a strike. Base is empty. One out here in the bottom of the second. Lady Rams up 1-0. One one pitch from Zolman. Ground ball to Norton at short. Teakin up with it. Throws over in time to get Emma Shaw. 6-4 on the put out for out number two. Number six hitter, the catcher. Lauren Wainwright steps in. 306 for Wainwright. No homers and 22 runs batted in. Now batting catcher, Lauren Wainwright. Solman's first pitch, high and away. Ball one. For those who are just joining us, Rams. Lady Rams with a run in the top of the first inning, lead one nothing. And you can hear the wind. The wind just whip. Ground ball, second base side. McQuillan bobbles it again. Scoops it, underhands it to Campy. Or to Carpenter in time. She's, uh, she's struggling a little bit. <laughs> McQuillan having a tough time out there. Well, she's making it work. But <laughs> she's got the out all three times. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no Lady Ram errors, almost. Nobody left on base. Through two innings of play. Over here at Bucyrus Regional Finals. It is Tenora 1. And... Here on nothing. We'll be back after this on your Drop Zone Pizza Rea scoreboard. 
Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273 and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Back here, top of the third inning we go. Keith Brown, Kaylee Runk with you. <laughs> For the Rams, send up 8, 9, and 1. Deegan Norton, Mickey Starkey, then on top, Anna Frazier. They'll face Eliza Maloney, who was the player of the year in the Sandusky Bay Conference. She came in with a 15-4 and four record, an ERA of 1.05. 106 innings pitched, struck out 137. She allowed 70 hits. Had to wait for Wainwright, who was the catcher, to get all her gear on. A little late starting the inning here. So Tegan Norton will step in. Tegan with a fantastic district week last week as well. Yeah, she had some great hits. I mean, starting the past couple, I mean, the past couple games, she's been hitting really good. Yeah, she came in hitting 200 to the districts and I came against Eastwood where everybody hit I think Tegan was on base three or four times yeah so Norton steps in the number eight hitter will face Eliza Maloney and you're just tuning in you're like what the heck is that noise it's bugging me it's the wind <laughs> we can't do anything about it. the Very wind much is, the, the wind. wind is just blowing so hard here pitches high and away over the top of Kaylee's head almost. <laughs> she ducked out well, the That play. doesn't say much. I'm not very tall. <laughs> hey, at least we can see here. <laughs> right. I mean, this is literally like we're on the field. A lot more. <laughs> we can see everything. <laughs> One ball, no strikes to count to Tegan Norton. Mickey Starkey is on deck. Maloney back into the circle. Her 1-0 pitch coming to Tegan Norton. Brown ball, third base side. One hopper, Emma Shaw fires over to first base. In time to retire Norton. 5-3 on the putout for the first out here in the top of the third. Number nine hitter, the flex, Mickey Starkey heads in. Starkey hitting for Tanae Smith at third base. Now batting number eight, Mickey Starkey. Thanks for joining us here on Tenora Rams Live on this Wednesday. First pitch. Strike called. Kind of a drive down here to be Cyrus. It was probably at least an hour 45, close to two hours, I think. That's yeah. a car. It wasn't, I mean, it, to, I mean, the way I came at least, it wasn't too bad of yeah. a drive. It was pretty straight. A couple turns here and there, but. Yep. Pitch to Starkey as a ball. Of course, that drive down 281 is just straight, kind of puts you to sleep yeah. on the way you get to close to Finley. On one count to Starkey. Swung on and missed. One ball and two strikes to Mickey Starkey hitting in the ninth position. Top of the lineup, Anna Frazier waits on deck. Trying to turn it down, but there's nothing I can do about it. It's just so windy. Starkey just gets a piece of it, follows it back to us. I had to like muffle my microphone here. <laughs> Lauren, Lauren Wainwright comes literally, we could have shook her hand, we're that close. <laughs> Starkey back in. We'll do it all over again. One ball, two strike pitch coming from Liza Maloney. Maloney, the right-hander. Strike three call. Down goes Starkey looking for out number two. Anna Frazier, top of the lineup, will step in. Anna singled. What's a second? When the Huron really wasn't paying attention, which the Lady Rams love to do. Went to third on a sacrifice by Marin Pittman and scored on a Logan McQuillan fielder's choice to the third baseman while Anna just took off and dice for the plate and dove on top of the bat. So Anna's definitely one you want to look out for. Slaps at third base side or to Shaw. Shaw fields it cleanly, fires over to first base in time to get Frazier for the third out. 5-3 on the put out in the inning for Tenora. No runs, no hits, no Lady Tiger errors, and the Rams do not leave anybody on base. Bottom of the third we go on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Lady Rams 1 and Huron nothing. 
Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273 and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Back here at Bucyrus, here at Jack Hewitt Field. Lady Rams lead 1-0 as we head to the bottom of inning number 3. 7 8, 9 to face Skyly Zolman, Sam LaFay, Kendall Williams, and J.C. Schmidt. Jump for the Tigers, right fielder, Sam LaFay. LaFay, 185 on the season for RBIs and five stolen bases. First pitch is a strike to LaFay. LaFay in right field. For Coach Jude Schmidt, coaching down there at third. Pitch strike two on the outside corner. Lady Rams were here a year ago, not here. They were in the spot in the regional semifinals. Lost to Carnington Lincoln. That was, uh, that was that a was, rough uh, game. <laughs> thanks for showing up, ladies. Uh, enjoy your ride home. I Basically, think that's definitely a game they will not forget. Just kind of, <laughs> for lack of a one-two pitch coming to LaFay. Swung on and missed. Strike three. LaFay, the first out. But uh, that was kind of, hey, thanks for showing up. Here's your participation <laughs> trophy, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> that was just a buzzsaw that they ran into. Like, there was nobody going to beat that team on that day. Kinda Williams steps in 300 with nine RBIs for the designated player, Kinda Williams, and batting in the eighth spot. I think that was a ball. I don't think she fouled it off. Even, uh-huh. the score, even the scoreboard operator doesn't have anything up yet, so I'm not sure. I what, thought she hit maybe it. Maybe she did. I guess we'll find out here. That one's tap foul. We'll see what the umpire puts up for fingers. I say she didn't hit it. I think she at least kept it out there. Let me see what he puts up. Yep. Oh, two. So it was. You're right, Kaylee. I say, I don't know if she hit it, or but I know she at least kept the bat out there. Oh, two pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Williams. That's the second out for Zolman. That's the fourth strikeout for Skyly, second straight here. She can just keep it coming. <laughs> Number nine hitter, J.C. Schmidt, steps in. Schmidt was a first-team all-conference. She batted 490 with 14 runs batted in and had 14 stolen bases. Pitches hit. Back to Skyly. She fires over to Paige Carpenter in time for the first out. 1-3 on that put out. Huron goes quickly here in the third. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. To the top of the fourth we go. Lady Rams one, and you're on nothing here on your drop zone pizza Rhea scoreboard. Okolona Tavern, located in downtown Okolona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okolona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okolona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Top of the fourth we go here from Bucyrus's Jack Hewitt Field. For Tenora, 2, 3, and 4. Pittman, McQuillan, and Gabby to face Liza Maloney. Definitely got three of our really good hitters coming up. We definitely cannot be watching the ball. We got to swing. We got to make contact. Make it on those bases and score a couple more runs. Just one hit in the game. That was by Anna Frazier, who yeah. let off the game. Pittman, right fielder. This is going as quick as the game on Monday. That Edgerton game, as I said, lasted 58 minutes. That was a 2-0 Lady Ram win over Edgerton, who was playing earlier at 2. I never actually saw if Edgerton won or not, but the GMC had three teams in the Sweet 16. Edgerton Division 4, and then the Fairview and Sonora here. First pitch to Marin is a strike. Unfortunately, Fairview was defeated by Johnstown 4-0. Macy Walters was basically unhittable. Fairview got just one hit off Macy. 0-1 pitch to Marin. Swung on a miss. Strike two. Ballers went to distance. Seven innings, one hit. She struck out 14 Apaches and did not walk anybody. At the plate, she was two for three and supplied a three-run home run to the top of the fifth inning. 
all runs in that game were in the top of the fifth. Four runs for Johnstown. 0-2 pitch from Loney to Pittman Low. Change up. Blooper falls over the head of the shortstop. So Marin Pittman with a little bloop single into shallow left center. Starts out the Rams' fourth inning here with a single. As Kaylee well, had one of her family members go get the blanket. This <laughs> seriously is cool. It's not cold, but it is. It has dropped at least I said 10 earlier, degrees. I never thought I'd be coming up with a blanket <laughs> this time of the season in the softball, but that wind. Squaring around the bun is Logan McQuillan, and she pops it straight up in the air. And Maloney was there to snag it for the first out sacrifice, unsuccessful. McQuillan retired one unassisted. I was really hoping that wasn't going to be one of those collision <laughs> again. They were the catcher and the pitcher were kind of going there, but the catcher, the pitcher did call her off. Paige Gamby steps in, first pitch to Paige and is fouled back. Actually, that happened in the earlier game. The second baseman and shortstop collided. They both came together by second base. Both of them were calling, and neither one was going to give, and they, boom, yeah. hit, and both went down. Unfortunately, I've seen a lot of that this season, and that's something you definitely got to try to avoid. Well, one pitch to Paige. Swung on, popped in foul territory, third base side to third baseman. Over there, Emma Shaw puts it away for out number two, so Gamby flies out in foul territory. Now Going to bring up the number five hitter, Paige Carpenter. Paige was honorable mention all GMC. Struck out her only a bat in the second. Lady Rams lead one nothing here in the top of the fourth inning. We're just flying along here. Pitch inside. Ball one chases plate. Page off the plate. Somebody got my, my pregame notes, Kaylee, so they're over there as well in the fan. <laughs> so, <laughs> one of many documents that are littered throughout the parking lot here. Me, oh, fouled off first out. base side into the fence. Hard one. <laughs> one ball, one strike to Paige Carpenter. Zoe Rostai is on deck. I don't think there's anyone in the bleachers over there that didn't flinch. <laughs> <laughs> they all were like, boo. Yeah, we are literally right on top of things here. 1-1 one, one pitch to Carpenter. Two out, nobody on for the Rams. Page just gets a piece of a foul at the plate, right at the feet of the catcher, Lauren Wainwright. Orzak at first, Wild at second, Hausoppel at short, and Shaw at third. Outfield was Herzog, Schmidt, and LaFay. Ford Huron on the mound is Eliza Maloney. Maloney is 1-2 pitch coming. Check swing. Page did that in her first at bat. This time they did not call it. Edgerton won. I'll be darned. Thank you, Chad. So congratulations to Coach Carrier and the uh, Edgerton Lady Bulldogs over there. Final eight. Or Elite eight, I guess it's called. Elite eight, final four. Should know that from the NCAA. <laughs> Page fouls it off first base side. So Rostai scoops it up over there in the on-deck circle. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and base is empty. 2-2 two -two pitch from Maloney. Strike! Swung on and missed. Strike three. Carpenter goes down swinging. In the inning, Rams get a runner on. They get no runs, though. One hit, no errors, and one left on base. Bottom of the fourth we go. Here on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, it is 1-0. The Lady Rams lead over Huron. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy an ice-cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back here, Lady Rams with a 1-0 lead. I think the gentleman to our left was trying to swat a fly and move our camera. <laughs> I don't know if it's in focus or not. Sorry about that if we're not. He's uh, creating the umpires here. <laughs> Eliza Maloney, the leadoff hitter, steps in. One, two, and three to face Skyly Zolman. Skyly has yet to allow a hit. Knock on wood. First pitch is high. Only grounded to Logan McQuillan, who made a heck of a play out there. She dove in the hole. And 
Saved a hit. Ball one pitches. A little bit outside. Ball two. Two balls and no strike to Maloney. 623 for Maloney on the season. She again, she was a player of the year in conference. That's ball three. Three balls and no strikes to Maloney. I believe Skylie fell behind three nothing in their first at bat to yep. Maloney. Came back and struck her out. Strike. Just like that. Call <laughs> three and one. To Maloney. I'll try and well figure I touch our camera. Cables are sensitive and it goes offline. I'll just leave it as is. Swan on little foul ball. It's just in front of the Rams dugout over there. Maloney just got enough of it. Jessica Halsapple awaits on deck. One nothing, Lady Rams here in the bottom of the fourth inning. One run, one hit, or two hits now for Tenora. No runs, no hits for Huron. 3-2 pitch, swung on. Ground ball. Tegan Norton backhands it in the hole, fires across in time to get Maloney. Great play by Tegan Norton. Backhanded on the third base side. Fired across to Paige Carpenter to get Eliza Maloney. That's the first out. First out here in the fourth inning. Jesse Holsoppel, second team all-conference steps in. She is the shortstop. Grounded to Logan McQuillan in the first inning as well. A little more adventure on that one. She squares her on the butt. Bunts through the ball. Or did she bring the bat back? She must have brought the bat back. She, yeah, she did. Ball one. Annabella Herzog is on deck. There's two house apples. One of them is strike one. One ball, one strike to Jesse House Apple. 463 on the season for House Apple. Homer and 25 runs batted in. Zolman's 1 1. Swung on and miss. Again, Skyly gets in that zone and. It's hard to stop her. Hard to stop her. <laughs> it's going to get the numbers on Skyly. When I have a split second, she's just pitching lights out here. One, two, pitch. Swung on it. Fouled right back at us, and I moved, and you moved at home. <laughs> Skyly <It's> has 44 <laughs> pitches and 29 strikes. She struck out four and is not allowed to hit or a walk yet. It's so different because when we were in Springfield last week, we had that barrier. We couldn't see anything. <laughs> and then at home, we're used to being up in the announcer yep. stand, so it's not even, it doesn't really affect us. Not used to being this close to it. <laughs> Pitched the house apple, swung on and missed. Another strikeout for Skyly. <laughs> it's going to bring up Annabella Herzog. She struck out looking in the first. And for Skyly, that is strikeout number five. Ball one, first pitch to Herzog. Definitely not liking the low. 447 for Herzog. Two homers, 26 runs batted in. Zolman's pitch. A little bit high. Two balls and a strike. Strong wind again from right to left here, as you can hear. Swung on and missed. Two balls and a strike to Annabella Herzog. Lane Orzak on deck. Herzog gets in. 2 1 pitch. Swung on. Fly ball to Frazier, and it going back, settles underneath it, squeezes it for the third out. Herzog hit it deep, but Frazier got back there in time to catch it for the third out. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Top of the fifth we go. Rams still with that one nothing lead on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. We'll be right back. The Ed Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Ed Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Matt and Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Back here, one nothing Rams. Nora's going to send 678 Rostai Zolman and Norton. The crew behind us, the staff here at uh, Bucyrus, are making fun of us when we flinch on all these rockets that come back at us <laughs> into the fence. <laughs> Zoe steps in. She was caught looking on strikes in the second. Rastai, Zolman and Norton. 
face Eliza Maloney. Get the numbers on Maloney here in a second. Pitch swung on. Little blooper over the head of the second baseman. She oh. falls down. Can't make the play. She hit the little cut of the grass back there. Hopefully she's all right. She may have sprained her ankle. Definitely went down kind of hard there. So Rostai with a little bloop over the head of the second baseman. She went back and kind of a lip back there that she tripped on and fell. Maloney's got 48 pitches and 37 strikes. She's pitched four innings, allowed two hits and one run. Struck out five so far. Runner at first. Nobody out. Skyly Zolman to the plate. Struck out the first inning. She was caught looking. Pitch to Skyly is outside. Skyly been on fire, Kaylee, the last yes. week. Skyly's definitely doing better now. I mean, she beginning of the season, she struggled a little bit, but I mean, she's been working on it, and I think she's come around pretty good on it, especially here late lane. One no pitch coming to Zolman. Runner at first. Pitch swung on and miss. Count evens of the ball and the strike. Runner at first, nobody, or one out. There's nobody out, there's nobody out. One ball, one strike, nobody out. Rams lead one nothing here in the top of the fifth. Pitch fouled way back over us here on the third base side, out of play. Another one into the cars. I'm really hoping I parked far enough When away. I initially pulled in, <laughs> I was like, uh, I parked down there on the far third base side. I'm like, this doesn't look good. So I pulled up behind the, now the, the school yeah, here. Now I'm regretting those decisions. <laughs> One, two, pitch by Skyly. Swings and misses. Strike three. So Skyly goes down for the second time. That's the first out. Ross Dye remains at first with one out. That's going to bring up Keegan Norton. Norton grounded out to third in the third. Ross Dye on at first. Pitch to Tegan. Little rise ball there. Swung on and missed. Strike one to Tegan. Mickey Starkey is on deck. Tegan, heck of a sophomore year. A little bit of a, not to say disappointing junior year, but on to third base side to third baseman. Did she touch that? That should be a fair ball. I thought ball. she touched it with the glove. Maybe not. Home plate umpire says she did not. She just missed it by a whisker yeah, then. She did. <laughs> then. That's where that wind's coming into play. It just whoop. So Norton by the whisker just missed a bunt single. Cross tie back to first base. One strike to Tegan. Tegan 0 for 1. Liza Maloney's pitch. Swung on, fouled right back at us. That Ooh. one wasn't as bad. That wasn't as bad. <laughs> <laughs> I've adjusted a little bit more. <laughs> Tegan down, no balls and two strikes. Runner at first, one out. Rams lead one nothing as they bat here at the top of the fifth inning. Well, there comes the wind. <laughs> Again, yes. Kind of comes in spurts. <laughs> 0 2 pitch to Norton. Swung on, little shallow fly ball. Right field just foul down the right field line. <laughs> Sixty-eight degrees now. <laughs> it's dropped three degrees since we started. I'm pretty sure it was like in the eighties yesterday. <laughs> like, it was eighty when it was eighty earlier today, about one thirty. Well, welcome to Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> one oh, or the O two pitch coming to Norton from Maloney. Foul ball, third base side. If anybody from Sonora parked over there, they can get a hold of Batten Stevens tomorrow. Get a hold of. <laughs> And that'd be more than happy to help you out on any car damages <laughs> that you may get here. Going to do all over again. 0-2 pitch from Maloney to Tegan Norton. Blooper right behind the plate. The catcher couldn't find it at first. Wayne Wright. And dropped harmlessly foul right in front of us. And so those ones are usually the most hardest ones for the catchers, mainly for the simple fact you have that umpire right there behind right. you trying to get around yep. to him without one taking him out or taking yourself out. <laughs> yes. A little bit of interference there. <laughs> Unintentional, of course. Again, 0-2 pitch to Tegan. Fouls it back again. I feel like Tegan's just waiting to make some good things happen here after falling off about five, six, three pitches. <laughs> Back. <coughs> 
County Rams lead 1-0 here in the top of the fifth. Runner at first with one out. Count to Norton, still 0-2. Liza Maloney is 0-2, pitch to Tegan, tap first base side. First baseman goes to second with it just in time to get Rostai. Nice play by the first baseman, Laney Orzak, to cut down the lead runner. So Rostai is the second out on the fielder's choice. Norton's on at first now with two outs. That was 1-6 on the put out at second. Very heads up play by the Tigers. Mickey Starkey steps in. Starkey caught looking in her first at bat. First pitch is a strike to Mickey. Oh, one pitch to Starkey. That's high. Count evens at the ball and a strike. One run on three hits for Tenora. No errors, no runs, no hits, and no errors for Huron. Sixty-three pitches for Maloney. She's got fifty strikes. So she's just right in that zone. One-one pitch to Starkey. Fouled it off. First base side. <laughs> almost sitting on that top row of that bleachers. <laughs> Looked like that sailed. So she's. That's what she's. This little fan over here is like. Boy, I need to pay attention. That goes hit me in the forehead. They should have brought their own helmets. <laughs> the prize is that low, honestly. <laughs> Pitch to Starkey, swung on and this. Down goes Starkey for the third out. Lady Rams in the inning get no runs on one hit, no errors, and they leave a runner. Bottom of the fifth we go. Lady Rams with a one nothing lead here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. We'll be back right after this time out. Getting what, better together was, was our goal for you and your family at Fairchild Family Chiropractic. Here, we are focused on getting our patients to achieve long-term wellness just beyond short-term symptom relief. At Fairchild Family Chiropractic, we do this by working closely with you and personalizing each treatment plan. Now open and accepting new patients. Come see Dr. A.J. Fairchild at 100 Stadium Drive. Call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. Fairchild, a proud of Tenora alum says go Rams. Make sure you get out there and see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla 100 Stadium Drive taking appointments now. Be more than happy to serve you for your aching bones and back and all your other needs. one nothing, Lady Rams here in the bottom of inning number 5. 4, 5, and 6 to face Kylie Zoman who is yet to allow a run or a hit. Orzak struck out in the second. First pitch to her is a ball for Skyly. Here so far today. She has 49 pitches and 32 strikes. She pitched four innings. As we said, does not allow a run or a hit. Fly ball into left field. In comes Zoe Rostai to put it away to retire Horzak for the first out here in the bottom of the fifth. So left field is, I think, I believe, new for her this season, and she's yes. done she's Very done an well. amazing job she out there a, this year. And, and Zoe's got a rocket for yeah. a right arm out there. <laughs> she has no problem making it into home with that arm. Emma Shaw steps in, 437 on the season for Shaw, 31 RBI. She grounded out to Norton at, in the second inning. This one's fouled off third base side, but that was a heck of a play by Tegan. Backhanded in the hole. Fired across in time to get Shaw. That was in the second inning here. Shaw fouls off the first pitch. No balls and one strike. You said it between innings. <laughs> Talking to Kaylee. Temperature dropped another three degrees here. <laughs> That's like when I came from, I mean, Defiance, it was not like we didn't have this wind at home. Yes. Like there was definitely not this wind. Yes. It was nice. It, I mean, this morning was nice and everything. And then on the way here, I felt the wind. I was like, what is this? <laughs> Little tapper, first base side foul. Shaw's down, no balls and two strikes. Here comes the 0-2 pitch, a little bit high. Skyly tried to get him to chase that one, and Shaw laid off. One ball and two strikes to the number five hitter, third baseman, Emma Shaw. Skyly's pitch inside, just missed Shaw's shins. Trust me, you do not want to get hit by one of her pitches. <laughs> It'll leave a mark for a week. It does. Plus. <laughs> Lauren Wainwright awaits on deck. 2-2 two -two count to Shaw from Skyly. Fouled back. 
Page Gamby says hi to everybody out there listening and watching. Well, watching, I guess. If you're listening, he didn't know Page literally was right in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> Fouled off first base side. Two balls and two strikes. Mr. Bishop says we have wind in defiance now. Oh, no. Of course we do. <laughs> of course it travels. Thank you, Matt, for the... <laughs> Weather update from back home in the 43512. 2 2 pitch coming. Strike three called. Shaw goes down looking. That's the second out. For Skyly, strikeout number six. Skyly is in the zone. She is almost pitching as well as our first game pitcher, Macy Walters. Walters mowed down 14 Apaches. Wainwright. First pitch I don't to her. where that went. Foul behind us. No cars back there. <laughs> Number six here, Lauren Wainwright, was first team all conference in the Sandusky Bay Conference. She's hitting 306. First of all, she grounded to Logan McQuillan. This one fouled back almost in the same spot. And ground balls to Logan here today have been an adventure, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep trying her toes. She's Absolutely. good at it. She's definitely good at that second base position. 0 2 pitch coming from Skyly to. Wainwright just missed just a shade outside. Wainwright laid off that. One ball and two strikes to Lauren Wainwright. I mean, Gamby positioned herself right where she needed to be for that pitch. That was a gorgeous pitch there. One, two pitches. Fouled at the plate off the foot of Wainwright. Sam LaFay awaits on deck for Huron. Hopefully we see her next inning. Bottom of the fifth, Lady Rams with a 1 0 lead, courtesy of a leadoff single by Hannah Frazier. This one's lined into center field for a base hit. First hit for Huron comes in the bottom of the fifth inning, so Wainwright with a two strike single. Skyly probably wishes she had that pitch back. A little too much plate on that for a two strike pitch. We have a pinch runner. I believe will be down there to pinch run for Wainwright. Coming in is pinch runner Layla. Layla Wetley is the pinch runner. Sam So LaFay steps in. She struck out in the third and her only at bat. She hits 185 on the season. Ground ball, second base side. McQuillan has the ball go through her legs. And they were a runner, yes. The yeah. runner actually ran into Logan. So LaFay is going to be out on the runner interference. Logan got in front of it. Yeah, I was kind of waiting to see if they were going to call her. I seen her. I wasn't sure she was going to interfere with her, if she was going to hit her or not. And then she kind of clipped her and wasn't quite sure if they were going to call it or not. But definitely got her on the runner interference. Yeah, the pitch runner, uh, Wetley on the ground ball to second base. Logan had the ball go through her legs, but she kind of got brushed as she went to feel the ball. She went down the field, and all of a sudden, I was like, well, what the heck just happened? <laughs> yeah. So in the inning for Huron, no runs. They finally get their first hit. No runs, and in theory, nobody left on base after the runner interference. So we're through five innings of play, heading to the top of the sixth inning here at Jack Hewitt Field. It is still Tenora 1, and here on nothing on your drop zone, Pizza Rias scoreboard. I'm trying to find a quick commercial. <laughs> I don't think I can <laughs> There's do not that. very I many find one. <laughs> Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back here, Keith Brown, Kaylee Runk with you. Top of the sixth inning already. It's one nothing, Lady Rams. And for Tenora, should be the top of the lineup. Anna Frazier, Aaron Pittman, and Logan McQuillan. Frazier singled in the first, went to second as Huron kind of fell asleep, went to third on the sacrifice by Pittman and scored on a Logan McQuillan fielder's choice to the third baseman, who actually... Shaw at third looked her back, and as soon as she let the ball go to first base, Anna took off for the plate and actually dove on top of the bat head first. First pitch to Anna, she slaps it foul. Third base side. Anna's definitely someone that we need up to be up to bat right now. I mean, we need her base running knowledge on there. I mean, her she's definitely smart yes, about how she runs bases. Absolutely, and that's definitely what definitely we need right now. Smart player out there. 
5-12 on the season for Anna with 30 stolen bases. 0-1 pitch coming to Frazier from Maloney. Strike two called. Anna quickly down, no balls and two strikes. Aaron Pittman on deck for the Lady Rams. Two pitch coming to Frazier. A little bit high in the way. One ball and two strikes. It's like every pitch you just assume, man, it's just going to swing the bat the way she approaches it. <laughs> One, two pitch coming to the Rams leadoff hitter, center fielder, Anna Frazier. Stays high. Ball two, two balls and two strikes to Frazier. Frazier steps out and now digs back in. 2-2 two, two pitch from Maloney as the dust flies. <laughs> I was say, we were doing good with the wind until the <laughs> dust came. Strike three, Frazier. Oh, half swing there goes down, sw or I guess he goes down swinging, but it's kind of a half check swing. Ball caught the outside right corner. Pittman. So Marin Pittman steps in for Tenora. Pittman sacrificed in the first, singled in the fourth. Rams lead 1-0 here in the sixth. The game that's flying by just under an hour old. Strike call. Rams played a 58-minute game versus Edgerton on Monday, and this one's not going to be too much longer the way we're going. Pitch coming. Oh, blooper. Pitcher Maloney calls for it, puts it away for out number two. Pittman pops out to Liza Maloney. Bring up Logan McQuillan. McQuillan is 0 for 2 with an RBI. Logan Knocked in Frazier with the only run of the contest. That was in the first inning. Logan 5-11 on the season. Pitch is a strike. Another short here, 202 down the right field line, 202 to center and down the left. I think it was going to say 185. So 185 to left field here. Yeah, I don't really fully understand that. <laughs> they have, which we'll get after this pitch. Swung on off of the umpire's mask. Knocks him crooked. <laughs> but there's a little extended high fence, like a little mini green monster out there, like the fence version. That's probably, I'm going to guess... 12 to 15 feet high from the left field line to left center just short of the scoreboard out there. Pitch coming to McQuillan. Inside pitch. She swings and misses. She goes down on the strike. So that's the third out. Rams go quickly in the six. No runs, no hits, no errors by Huron and nobody left on base. Bottom of the six we go. Lady Rams still with that one nothing lead here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Back here. Jack U of Field, bottom of the six we go. Eight, nine, and one for Huron. Skyly Zolman. One hit for Skyly. Five innings pitch. He struck out six and has not walked a batter. Kendall Williams struck out in the third. Will be the first batter that Zolman faces. Pitch swung on and missed. <laughs> I wouldn't look at it kind of close. I thought you were pretty picky. <laughs> Pitch to the backstop. It goes two balls, or one ball and one strike to Kendall Williams. Eight, nine, and one here on the bottom of the six. One to one pitch coming to Kendall Williams. Strike two. 
temperature drops and the wind picks up, <laughs> it could be snowing before we leave. <laughs> it's all the way down to 67. At least the sun's out. I mean, yeah, at least we're not so in the good. shade. Thank like, goodness. I think that's what's saving us. Just a bit outside on the one-two pitch. Thank you, Laura and Ray and whoever else is tuning in to watch. We appreciate you, Keith and Keith Brown, Kaylee Run here on this Wednesday from Cyrus. Ground ball. Thrown out. So Williams is the first out here. Did I go to Tanae? I actually couldn't see. I think it was Tanae or Keegan. I'm not sure. No, I went to Skyly. Those ones didn't work? Yep. No wonder I couldn't see. <laughs> One three yep. on the put out. I was like, I couldn't see the ball. Got umpire, catcher, batter all right here. <laughs> Dishy Schmidt. Bounces it right back to the mound. Paxton Page Gabby pops out and her momentum has she's, her going towards first base. Puts it away. Fires down to first base in time for the out. She, she definitely has a cannon on her. She can throw. As we saw in the final out last Saturday, uh, Wednesday, when they got the double play to end the game. Yeah. So Page took that one. She called Skyly off. Top of the lineup, Liza Maloney. I don't really have time to write stuff down when I write down and like, <laughs> we already have another out. <laughs> oh, one pitch from Zolman to Maloney. That one's high. Count evens at one ball, one strike. One nothing Lady Rams here in the bottom of the sixth. Two outs, bases empty. Skyway's allowed just one hit. She struck out six, has not walked the batter. Foul ball, first base side, out of play. That's actually a really nice changeup she that threw was, in there. That was perfect. So she's worked really hard on those. Last year she kind of struggled a little bit. She definitely she worked on those over the offseason. She's done pretty good with them so far this year. Oh, two pitch just misses <laughs> high and away. One, two, count on Maloney. She is 0 for 2. 623 on the season for Maloney. Grounds it to Tanae Smith at third. Throws over in time. Nice snag by Tanae. 5 3 on the put out. That's the third out here in the sixth inning for Huron. No runs, no hits, no ram airs, and nobody left on base. Top of the seventh inning we go here on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Lady Rams one and Huron nothing. We'll be back right after this here on Tenora Rams Live. Getting better together is our goal for you and your family at Fairchild Family Chiropractic. Here, we are focused on getting our patients to achieve long-term wellness just beyond short-term symptom relief. At Fairchild Family Chiropractic, we do this by working closely with you and personalizing each treatment plan. Now open and accepting new patients. Come see Dr. A.J. Fairchild at 100 Stadium Drive. Call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. Fairchild, a proud Tenora alum says go Rams trying to get Dr. Rady some business no actually the <laughs> what, what it is is we have like a bank of what 18 20 commercials probably Kaylee yeah. we can really only play about four or five of them because after about 30 seconds like the teams are so quick in between innings they're ready to go if you play half these commercials you're going to miss like a batter <laughs> so, only gives you one pitch and, so, <laughs> and that's yeah, it <laughs> we're just I'm unfortunately playing the same ones over and over again because we don't have time to play. Like, drop zone is close to 50 seconds. If I played that, we'd miss a batter or two tonight. <laughs> Gamby steps in. Page struck out looking in the first and fouled out in the fourth. First pitch from Maloney. Hugh Gamby is a strike. Gamby needs to put one, put a little charge into one here. I said they've been struggling with her changeup all night. <laughs> yes. Ground ball just foul outside the bag of third. Again, Maloney's been in the strike zone or around it all game long. 76 pitches. She has 61 strikes. She's allowed three hits, one run that was earned. She struck out nine and has not walked the batter. But 60 or 76 pitches is 61 strikes. 0 2 coming from Maloney to Gamby. Foul ball, first base side out of play. Thanks for joining us here on Snow Rams Live. We appreciate everybody from watching. If you're listening in your car, you're watching on Facebook. Appreciate that as well, as which I think the camera is probably getting blown sideways by the wind as well. 
O2 pitch to Page. A little changeup by the third baseman in the hole. Shortstop fields it in time. Not in time. Gamby beats it out. Win by Shaw at third. House Opple deep at short field and fired across. Initially thought that maybe she got Page, but she did not. So Gamby with a leadoff infield single. So that was a good play by the first baseman, oh, though. She, she almost did the splits trying to catch that. <laughs> Tried to stretch every inch she could to get that out, but Gamby beat it out. So the Rams with a runner at first with nobody out here in the seventh inning. One run right here would be huge for the Lady Rams. Paige Carpenter squares around the bunt, bunts through the ball. Gamby dives back into first base, and the throw down nailed her right in the ribs. That's going to hurt. Coach B gives her the little lo-fi there. You all right? Paige is like, yep. I think it kind of bounced before it hit her. Yes, so it kind yes. of Thank goodness. lost some of that momentum there. Yes. Like nailed her right square in the ribs. Pitch She'll to Carpenter. That one later. Yes, pitch to Carpenter. She bunted through it. That was a strike. 0 1 pitch to Carpenter. High and away. Nice snag by Wainwright to save a pass ball. That would have been as good as a bunt had that thing came to yeah. the backstop. That's probably the wildest pitch we've seen here by Maloney. And it wasn't even a wild pitch. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Carpenter. Squares around the butt. Bunts through it again. No balls and two strikes to Page. Runner on first. Nobody out. Lady Rams with a 1-0 lead here in the top of inning number seven. We are just over an hour old. First pitch was 453. Maloney's pitch to Carpenter, fouls it back behind us. Count stays, no balls, and two strikes. Here's like get some snapshots from my post-game article. I'm going to take a picture or two here. <laughs> so Carpenter digs in. Pitch just misses that outside corner. I think she even thought Ooh, it was. <laughs> Paige is like, oh, give me another pitch, please. <laughs> I don't know how that wasn't a strike. That's, he's been very picky about that outside corner all night. Two balls, two strike pitch coming to Paige Carpenter. Paige Gamby on first base with nobody out. Swung on little blooper down the right field side. Foul. <laughs> Lady Rams with a run in the first, and that has been it for either team. Winner comes back here tomorrow, or tomorrow, Saturday, to play Johnstown. The Johnnies beat Fairview 4 0 in the first game at 2 o'clock. 2 2 pitch from Maloney to Carpenter. Little blooper into the right field it goes. Gabby hits second. She's going to third. Throw gets away. Gabby's going to try and score. No throw. Lady Rams lead 2 0 on the opposite field. RBI single by Paige Carpenter. Head on now, so cut Carpenter went down to second on the throw. So Carpenter's at second with nobody out. Zoe Rostai steps in. Zoe with an opposite field single in the fifth. She is one for two. Left fielder. That's a huge run, Kaylee. Yeah. That's, uh, I can make or break this game right now. <laughs> Coach Fairchild going to put in a pinch runner. And here comes. Number four, I don't know who number four Our is. usual pinch runner. <laughs> Trinity Corber, the designated pinch runner for Coach Fairchild. So Trinity is going to run at second. Nobody out. We'll see what Zoe Rostai wants to do. Coach Fairchild has Zoe do. Assuming he wants Zoe to bunt it down the first base side. Rams with a run in the first and one here in the seventh for a 2 nothing lead. Sweet 16, the regional semifinals here at Bucyrus. Pitch is a little bit low. Ball one to play Rasta Eliza Maloney. Looks at the wristband. Gets the pitch. Gets back in the circle. 1 0 pitch coming to Zoe. High and away. Two balls and no strikes to Zoe Rostai. Zoe batting in the sixth spot, plays in right field for the Lady Rams. Corver down to second. She's the pinch runner for Carpenter. Pitch 
smashed into right field for a base hit. Corber's going to have to stop the throw at first base. Gets Rostai, so the right fielder playing way up. LaFay fields it, fires over to get Rostai. Corber goes down to third. I haven't seen that for a long time. <laughs> so Rostai is out. She got thrown out from right field, which is 9-3. to three. That's out number one. The right fielder out there, LaFay, was literally right behind the graph. Skyly Zolman steps in, chance to help herself here with the runner at third with one out. First pitch to Skyly is a ball. Corbers down at third. Listen to the coach Fairchild. I said this is definitely the position Skyly likes to be in. <laughs> yes. 1-0 pitch coming to Skyly from Maloney. High, nice stop by Wainwright. Saved a ball to the backstop. Two balls and no strikes to Skyly Zolman. Tegan Norton is on deck. 2-0 pitch coming to Skyly. Off the right arm of Maloney. Swung on and fouled right back at Kaylin. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes think she does it on purpose. <laughs> Two balls and a strike to Skyly. One out. Rams with an insurance run here in the seventh lead. 2-0. Fairly Corbett down at third. The pinch runner. 2-1 pitch coming to Skyly Zolman. Maloney set. Here it comes. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Two balls and two strikes to the Rams pitcher, Skyly Zolman. Maloney, the senior. Zolman, the junior. Head to head on the mound tonight. 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Skyly. High ball three. Count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. Tegan Norton on deck for the Lady Rams. Top of the seventh, two nothing Sonora. Trip to the regional finals awaits the winner. Three two pitch to Skyly. Shot over the head of the right fielder. That's going to score. Corver roll all the way to the wall. Zolman hits second. She's on her way to third. Coach Fairchild says, "Stop right there." Zolman with an opposite field RBI triple gives the Lady Rams a 3-0 lead. Takes me everything in my power not to yell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cheer for her if i got to remember I'm on the mic. <laughs> she makes me so nervous when she's up to bat. <laughs> now batting shortstop, Tegan Norton. Tegan Norton steps in. Runner at third, still one out. Rams lead 3-0. Maloney's pitch swung on and missed by Tegan. For those listening, what's your relationship to Skyly <laughs> Kaylee? For those that don't know, Skyly is my cousin. Yes. <laughs> she's only she's a couple, well, obviously a couple years younger than me, but no. <laughs> but I've been following her with her playing ball for years now. So pitch is low, gets a little bit behind Wainwright. One ball and one strike. Zolman held on at. Third base. <laughs> one ball, one strike, one out. Runner at third is Skyly Zolman. Rams lead three nothing here in the top of the seventh. Maloney's pitch just misses. Two balls and a strike to Tegan. Maloney, ninety-seven pitches, seventy-four strikes. She allowed six hits now, three runs, both earned. Or all of them, not both. Three are earned. Both this inning, I should say. Pitch to Tegan. Fouled off first base side. Count to Tegan. Goes to two balls and two strikes. Game changer freezes on this phone about eight times a game. <laughs> it's only when you want to check it. Exactly. <laughs> Loney's 2-2 pitch coming to Tegan Norton. Norton is 0 for 2. He can throw really hard. Fouled off first base side. Count stays at 2 2. Like the Rams to get another run. 3 0 is really good the way Skyly's pitching, but 4 0 would be excellent. Makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I will say, I think next year we do need to get a clicker for foul balls. No doubt. We in like the 30s today. <laughs> 2 2 pitch. Just a bit high. Count goes full to the Rams shortstop, Tegan Norton, who made a great play earlier in this game. 
3-2 pitch to Norton with one out runner at third. Skyly. Here it comes. Foul back. First base side. Okay, so they got this contraption over here on the fence. I was kind of curious how he was getting them. They put these balls yes, in a chute. In, yes, right there. I, I seen that, that I think earlier. at Springfield. I've, I think they had them there too, but I couldn't figure out what it was. I was trying to figure out where they were putting these balls. It's like in. a hungry, hungry hippo. You put the ball in there and it comes off the other side, so the umpire just comes back and grabs it. 3 2 pitch to Tegan Norton. Swung on, blooped over the head of the third baseman. Caught out of nowhere by the shortstop. Jesse Halsopel. Just some speed on that. Just she came took out of for that. nowhere. Thought that was going to fall in. I don't know if it would have been fair or not, but Norton will call a foul. F6, foul number two. But I thought it was going to fall, either fair or foul, but Halsopel must be a sprinter part-time. Just came out of nowhere because it was over the head of Shaw. She wasn't getting it, and the left fielder sure wasn't catching it. So that's two outs now. Bring up Mickey Starkey. First pitch to her is a strike. Mickey caught looking on strikes in the third and strike out swinging in the fifth. Again, it's a, it's a huge run down there. But we'll take a fourth run. Starkey fouls it at the plate. No balls and two strikes to the Rams. Flex hitting for Tanae Smith. Mickey Starkey. Rams lead 3 0 here in the top of the seventh. Seems like this inning's taking longer than most of the game, <laughs> which I'm all right with. Only that puts runs on the board. Swung on and missed. Change up. Starkey way out in front. She goes down swinging for the third time today in the inning for the Rams. Two huge runs. They do so on three hits. No errors. And a runner left on base. Bottom of the seventh we go. The Rams need three outs to advance to Saturday. Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard shows Tenora three. And here on Nothing, we'll be back right after this. Signs Excavating of Defiance offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Trucking Service can also assist in any of your equipment hauling needs. They're located at 2147 State Route 66. Signs Excavating, family owned and operated since 1999. For any excavating needs, give Josh a call at 419-769-2290. And for your trucking needs, bring up Brad. 419 419- 9481-3738. Be sure to visit them online at signsexcavating.com or Signs Excavating on Facebook. Signs Excavating wishes all the best to the Tenora Rams athletes. Bottom of the seventh we go. Three runs, six hits, no errors for Tenora. No runs, one hit, one error for Hura. Zolman. Six innings pitched, one hit, no run, struck out six, no walk. 75 pitches, 50 strikes for Skyly. First pitch is fouled back this way. Make Strike that 51. one. <laughs> Two, three, and four, the heart of the lineup for Huron. Halsopel, 463. Herzog, 447. And Orzak, 567. The three hitters that Zolman will face. Pitch is a little bit low. One ball and one strike. Regional final berth at stake. Pitch swung on and missed. Zolman ahead of Halsopel. I think that's one ball and two strikes, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Yeah, she had a Scoreboard says one foul ball. one. One two pitch coming from. Ooh, I kind of came back in. That hit. Oh, hey, she's stuck on her. Cammy, she was stuck. <laughs> First, I thought she was woozy. I was like, oh, this isn't good. She, Coach Fairchild was going to come out and talk to her. Kind of smacked her. I think it got her up in the, like, in the face, kind of. But then her glove got yeah, stuck on her went, cleat. She, her glove got stuck on her cleat, which made your seam. That's what Coach Fairchild was saying. She couldn't get up. It was like, first, she looked like she was a boxer that was like, ugh. <laughs> but somehow her glove and cleat got merged together and she stumbled a couple steps. I think one of those spikes got stuck in the hole in her glove. and <laughs> I don't think I can fish this I don't think I've ever seen that. There's a so. big concern there for Coach Fairchild. 1-2 pitch coming. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Hossoppel goes down on strikes for the first out for Skyly. Strikeout number seven. Rams are two outs away from the regional finals on Saturday. 
Annabelle Herzog. Herzog steps in. She is 0 for 2. Struck out looking in the first flow out to Anna Frazier deep in center. Ground ball, shortstop side. Norton can't field it, so Herzog is on with one out. Now batting first baseman, Lady Orzek. Lady Orzek steps in. 567 for Orzek. 3 0 Lady Rams here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Runner at first, one out. Orzek bats from the left side. First pitch to her. Is a ball. That's the first error for the Lady Rams. Yeah. Quiet. Error on Norton. 1 0 pitch coming. Swung on, fouled off. Third base side. Should have got some business cards from Mr. Jeff Batten. Stuck them on windshield, <laughs> windshields out here. <laughs> one ball, one strike, one out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Lady Rams lead 3 0. Pitch to Orzak. Swung on. Ooh, fouled. <laughs> just outside. The, almost got her teammate there. <laughs> man, oh, man. That hit the top of that dugout there. Just outside the opening of the dugout. Boy, oh, boy. One, two pitch. And fouled back again. One ball, two strikes to the number four hitter, Laney Orzak. She hits 567 on the season. Tonight, she's 0 for 2 against Skyly. Skyly, 1-2 pitch. Just a bit outside. Two balls and two strikes. Kylie gets that ball tonight, Kaylee, and she is ready to go. Yeah. She doesn't, she's not messing around. And, I mean, to be honest, she usually does the best when she does that. She gets in a, she gets in a motion, and that's, she, she likes to keep it. 2-2 two, two pitch. Strike three. Swinging. Down goes Orzak for Skyly. Another strikeout. Eight strikeout for Skyly. Two outs. Number five hitter, Emma Shaw, steps in. Third baseman, Emma Shaw. Lady Rams with a 3 nothing lead. Stay tuned. We'll have post-game from Bill Lack Insurance and Investments in our, well, knock on wood, providing the Rams win. A player of the game from Higby Embroidery. Pitch was a ball to Emma Shaw. Tap third base side. Tanae Smith fields a long throw across. In time! Lady Rams with a 3-0 victory advance to Saturday to take on the Johnstown Johnnies. Final out went 5-3 today. Smith with a nice glove down there. Fired across in time. No runs. No hits. One Lady Ram air, one left on base. Zero. After to today, the Rams will travel back and head back here Saturday. Lady Rams with a 3 nothing win for Tenora. Congratulations to both teams on a great game. Three runs, six hits, and one error for Huron. No runs, just the one hit and one error. We'll be back right after this, provided I can see and find it. Our Bidlack <laughs> Insurance and Investments post game show right after this. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back here at Bucyrus from Jack Hewitt Field. Lady Rams with a 3-0 win. Huron sees their season end at 20. Three and six. Lady Rams pick up win number 20. They improve to 20 and seven. Time of the game was just over two hours and 15 minutes, I believe. So very quick again. Lady Rams, we said three runs, six hits, one errors. And for Huron, no runs, just one hit and one error. Lady Rams 
with one run in the first inning. Anna Frazier led off with the infield single. Kind of went to second as Huron pretty much fell asleep out there. Yeah. And sacrificed over to third by Marin Pittman and came home on Logan McQuillan's grounder to the third baseman where actually Emma Shaw, the third baseman, looked at Anna before she threw over to first base and Anna took off on her horse and dove into home plate and as Kaylee said, she literally dove on top of the bat to score the run. So the Lady Rams led 1-0. That was all the way through until the seventh inning where the Rams put two more on the board courtesy of Paige Carpenter. Well, Paige Gammy led off with a single. Paige Carpenter with an RBI single and then Skyly Zolman with a triple to the opposite field knocked in Paige Carpenter. So, And Skyly picks up the win. She pitched seven innings, just one hit, no run, struck out eight. And more impressively, Kaylee did not walk a batter. Yes, that is definitely very important. <laughs> so, heck of a game by the Lady Rams. Not too much celebration going on out here because obviously they have a goal. And last year, as we talked about, when you play in the game like this and you're in the Sweet 16 and you come out and the game is basically over before it even starts. Uh, and they learned from that and they came back yep. today and focused in and they're locked in, went out there, had a little small gathering, talked to Coach Fairchild and they're ready to go back to back to home. Yeah, that was definitely something that, I mean, Tony had talked about, I think, last week that even when, I mean, when they won districts, so they didn't cheer and chant everything like they did yep, last year. Yep. They they hoping if they keep it calm yep. and chill and collect that it'll help yep. them get through to, well, and, and win they state. Did. <laughs> yes. So we'll be back. We got a big choice here for the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game, and we will do it right after this from Connie Higby at Higby Embroidery. If I can find it, like I said, I can't actually see, I can't see my board covered in dust and sand and everything else. We'll be back after this. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroider is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Back here at Jack Hewitt Field here in Busayas. Lady Rams with a 3 0 win. Advanced to Saturday, 12 o'clock. They will play for a state berth. Well, they take on the Johnstown Johnnies. Welcome to our Higby Embroidery Player of the Game. And Kaylee, what did we come up with? Oh, we have, I, I've grown to like this. <laughs> it took me a hot minute at first. Um, so tonight we are going to, I mean, it's going to be, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say offense and defensive play. Uh, tonight's player of the game is going to go to Skylie Zolman. I mean, she did an amazing job yep. on the mound. No walks. Um, she, I mean, one, one hit, I believe. One hit. Um, I mean, and then she had that amazing triple, which which is, I think, big for Skyly because she's definitely picked up speed. She used to be very slow. So for her to be able to come out here and get a triple and run it is impressive. Yes. <laughs> uh, you're, you're in the final 16 teams of the state. The winner obviously advances to the Elite Eight. And you, as a junior, come out and fire a one-hitter in a regional final with a team, mind you, that hit 425 coming in. Here on. Yep. 425 as a team. They had, I think, half their lineup hit 400 and had at least 20 RBI. So for Skyly to come out and really never got into too much trouble, honestly, 89 pitches for Skyly, 60 strikes, did not walk anybody, struck out eight, allowed one hit. So take me embroidery, player of the game goes to Skyly Zolman. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in here today. We'll be back here on Saturday at 12 o'clock. Check the weather and sure that the weather's fine. Hopefully it's going to be a little less windy and a little more warmer. As Try to untape your papers tape from the table. My picture, but <laughs> thanks everybody for watching and those who listen. And thanks more important for Kaylee for joining me. Last second jetted in here and grabbed the headset and we were ready to go by the first pitch. So thank you Kaylee. <laughs> You're Appreciate welcome. It. Thanks for having You're me. You're welcome. And thanks to our sponsors BSN Sports, Weber Bookkeeping, Maumee Valley Title Agency, Clubhouse Pizza and A, Fairchild Family Chiropractic Center, Optimal Performance and Fitness, Drop Zone Pizzeria, Higby Embroidery, Signs Excavating, Firestone Tavern, Oklahoma Tavern, Northwest Ohio 
Sports, Pat and Stevens Body Shop, Sonora Rams Athletic Boosters, Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon, Wooden Indian Pawn Shop, Bitlack Insurance and Financial Services, Wiener Hill Weber and Stanley Attorneys at Law, Postum Insurance and Investments, and finally, Mayfield Engineer Corporation. Start your Met career today. $1,000 sign-on bonus. Go to metcareers.com. Again, thanks, Kaylee. Thanks, you guys, for watching and listening. We'll be back here Saturday at about 1140 for our Signs Excavating pregame. Until then, have a good night, everybody. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be